So it's almost about to cry. Aww. I've not seen a single fan in here pumping air from the outside. You see how hot it is? It's absolutely roasting in here. Hello. I can't begin to describe what it was like in there. So viewers, had an interesting night last night. Woke up this morning, had to rush to the toilet. And then I had to rush back again within an hour. Um, and I've got horrific stomach cramps. So not been fun, really feeling bad. Um, and it's also now 33 degrees, so it's gonna be a bit of a tricky one today. I think I'm a little bit more patient than Amy is in this regard, but I'm finally gonna say it on camera with some reluctance. <laughs> Maybe don't visit Egypt. <laughs> really the final bout, or the second bout of food poisoning that sort of broke the camel's back for me, no pun intended. Um, and yeah, I, I just think, you know, awesome, awesome history. But honestly, I'm just starting to wonder if it's worth it. We've been paid by people trying to stop us using the camera. The trip's brought us a lot of discomfort and you know, not the kind of discomfort we're used to, like walking across Jordan, but you know, the healthy, self-inflicted discomfort. Um, but yeah, just the sort of, you know, food poisoning and, and hassling discomfort. And I now have to agree, you know, it might not actually be worth it, um, which really pains me to say, because, you know, the history is absolutely awesome. Um, and yeah, it's a shame, but yeah, we're gonna try and just struggle through today. But yeah, join me. The good news is we are here in the Giza Pyramid Complex. Behind me, of course, is the world-famous Sphinx, the Pyramids of Khufu and Khafre. And uh, yeah, let's have a chat and have a little walk around. So all of these pyramids were built between 2600 and 2500 BC, which means that they're four and a half thousand years old. And just to give you some quick facts, it's 146.5 meters tall, 2.3 million um, blocks of limestone, each of which weigh between two and a half and 15 tons. It's an enormous achievement to build something like this that long ago, but in truth, it's an enormous achievement to build this really at any time. And at 146.5 meters tall, it remained the tallest building in the world for about 4,000 years until Lincoln Cathedral in the UK was built in 1311 AD. And the pyramids were popularized in the hedonistic period by a Greek um, poet, Antipater of Sidon, because he described them as one of the great wonders of the world. This is the only one that still exists in that sort of original classification of them in his poetry. Now there's some debate as to how specifically uh, they were constructed. It's generally agreed that they were mined, uh, the rocks were mined from a nearby quarry and essentially dragged here. Um, they would select a flat um, bedrock, um, so they didn't build it on the sand, they built it on a, on a stable bedrock. Um, and they would literally build it up um, horizontally uh, in layers. Herodotus, the Greek historian, he visited Egypt in 450 BC and he was told by the priests that it took 400,000 men uh, 20 years to build it in uh, three month shifts. Um, each three month shifts, of course, had 100,000 men in it. Um, but actually, uh, we, re we reckon from archaeological evidence that in actual fact, it was more like 10,000 men uh, working in three month shifts, and it probably took them more like 30 years. So I'm just walking a little bit closer now to look for the casing stones. Um, and these were large chunks of limestone that were uh, quarried from a place called Kura about 15 kilometers uh, down the River Nile and transported here by river barge. Um, and they're really interesting because they reckon there's still a few of them uh, still at the base of the, uh, uh, base of the pyramid that still exist. And they would have formed sort of the outer layer. Oh. <laughs> Hello mate, didn't see you there. They would have formed the uh, outer layer of the pyramid and given it a smooth appearance, but also they would have been polished so they would have been sort of like almost glossy um, and that would have made the pyramid reflect the sun. So yeah, what we're looking for is um, essentially stones made out of fine white limestone. And you may be wondering like, you know, what happened to the outer layer? Was it eroded away? Well, yeah, 
you know, part of that was what happened. But actually, they think that during the Middle Ages, people actually came over here and, uh, you know, collected them so that they could then carry them back to Cairo to build other structures. Um, so yeah, we're looking for smooth white stones, but to be honest, I don't see them. Do you see any casing stones, Amy? No. I think I forgot to mention that uh, we're really looking at um, the old kingdom, whereas most of this series I've been looking at sort of the new kingdom. So this is about a thousand years older than what we've been focusing on. So this here could be casing stones. They certainly look like they certainly look like a slightly different rock to above. This is obviously a lot darker up here, but this looks a lot whiter. So this is probably the outer layer. And word to the wise, we came here at noon and this is the hottest day we've been here. Yeah, big error. It is absolutely roasting. In fact, everyone is like ducked in the wall to try and find a little bit of shade. But now we're gonna try and go inside, as I think is the queue up there. So unsurprisingly, we weren't allowed to film in there, of course. Um, so, but I managed to get some footage on the phone. Not recommend if you're claustrophobic. And then people are squeezing down, coming the other way. Barely enough space. It's madness. And it's sweating, it's hot, really hot in here. The walls are almost damp in places. Okay, incredibly well, like, the yeah, you can see how tricky it is to go up here. Thankfully, I'm not hugely tall. Benefits of being just under six foot. <laughs> Out of my hand. This is slippery. See how hot it is. It's absolutely roasting in here. You see my face. Oh, one more tiny passageway. It's no more than a meter high. This. And there's a little thing up here. This, of course, is the sarcophagus. I've not seen a single fan in here pumping air from the outside. Okay, Amy. So I've not seen a single fan in here pumping air. Not one. These aren't even on. That's not even on. So this is the only entrance way. And then there's sarcophagus. This guy is just waiting. Insane. Trying to get it down quickly now before other people start to come up. I can't begin to describe what it was like in there. 
That's madness. I still have done it, but a, a warning would have been nice. Amy's just saying she nearly had a panic attack. You did have a panic attack. Very, very uh, claustrophobic. Very anxious or mild panic It was incredibly claustrophobic. Um, Never had that feeling before. <laughs> it, I, it's very rare that you're stuck in a tunnel with. I can't believe any people were in. I was there. also getting freaked out because I was like, is anyone else worried that there's all these blocks on top of our head <laughs> that was built 4,000 years ago? Like, I remember <laughs> loud banging. Oh, did not like that at all. And um, Egypt does get earthquakes, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't trust Egyptians for safety. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit different. I find higher cathedrals in Europe. Ah, yeah. Let me take my hat off. Hold it. <laughs> this is going to be really embarrassing to film. But <laughs> oh, wow. I think mine's worse. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's just Let's from inside see. the pyramid. <laughs> was that worth the experience? It was worth it, but it would have been nice to have a warning. You couldn't do it. The problem was if someone panicked and got stuck, it would have been really bad. I <laughs> fell short of breath and that, that wasn't a hard climb, but it's hard because you're bent over. But I shouldn't have been as short of breath as I was. I think the oxygen was low in there. I think it must have been. So I was almost about to cry. Aww. Just like anxious. I don't know, I've never had a panic attack, so I don't know what it feels like, but it, I feel like it felt like that. Come to Cairo. Go in the pyramid, get, get, a panic pyramid. Attack. get a panic attack. Yeah, just to finish off about these casings, the outside layer of rocks, they all would have been um, cut to roughly the same size, the same width and height, and they would have been marked by the workers to indicate the angle of the pyramid, uh, and then trimmed to that level so that they all slotted together on the outside. So quite um, expert levels of masonry uh, went into kind of the finishing touches so the Khafre Pyramid behind me is often confused and thought to be bigger than the, uh, the Great Pyramid, the Khufu Pyramid um, here. But that's not actually the case. It's just at an elevated uh, location. And the casing stones, the outer layer, that's still present uh, at the top of this pyramid and gives you much more of a, a feel for what the original, or what it would have looked like, you know, originally when it was constructed. And it was completed in 2570 BC, so around 100 years after the Great Pyramid. So they were constructed primarily to house the remains um, of deceased pharaohs and in particular their car which is sort of like I guess our modern equivalent of their spirit um, it was believed to remain within the corpse uh, after they were after they passed away uh, and so it was necessary for them to be um, buried uh, in a manner that would kind of preserve this and this was so that the pharaoh could carry out his duties in the next life as the king of the dead and of course, famously, they were also buried with possessions that they may require in the next life. The pyramids also acted essentially a little bit like a bank vault. They would keep all those possessions of the king safe after he was buried. The ancient Egyptians believed that death on earth was just part of the journey to the next life. Um, and so they didn't have this kind of final perception that we have nowadays of death being the end rather sort of a new beginning which is very comforting i suppose in a way and the other thing to mention of course is that um around the uh pyramids there's a, a workers village there's actually a whole village designed just outside of the pyramid complex to house all the laborers and they weren't slaves some of them were quite skilled workers and in fact around here you'll find other tombs and they found them with bread and beer um, and it sort of suggests that they too were sort of taking those things with them into the afterlife and it shows that the Egyptians really revered uh, their laborers they weren't treated as slaves some of them were treated with a huge amount of respect the two pyramids are only a couple hundred meters apart um, if that as always we have the mandatory horse and cart everywhere we go <laughs> mistreating donkey or horse around seems to be a universal thing here um, you know major world landmarks <laughs> So to feed this uh, army of laborers virtually, um, archaeologists um, estimate that they were getting through 74 cattle um, per week um, and 257 
sheep and goats. Um, and that kind of gives you an ind indication about just how many people there were and, and what an operation it was and how much funding it required. And the king's temple, the great temple, has three smaller pyramids around it. And we actually walked past those a little bit earlier. I'll try and get some B-roll of them for you. And those were the queen's pyramids. Um, and there are also three boats. And uh, one of them that was found buried around here called the Khufu ship is actually in remarkable condition. And actually tells us a lot about how they design those ships. And it's in such good condition that they, they theorize that if you were actually tried to float it on the Nile today, it would actually operate as a working ship. Um, and again, these were just things that they felt that he may need in the next life. So he would be buried in the temple, but outside there would be three ships, um, as well as the three um, other pyramids to house his uh, queen. Queens. <laughs> the arrangement of the pyramids is a representation of the Orion constellation according to a sort of disputed Orion constellation theory. So it's thought that the Egyptians were actually orientating the pyramids towards the stars. Um, and if that is the case, we're not entirely sure what the reason for this was. Um, but again, it just sort of adds that mystery of the pyramids. See the edge there? That's the edge of the casing stones. So that's the smooth white limestone. I think they should repair one to be honest. Just one, just so you can kind of see what it would have been like. Maybe this smaller one over here. This is the third pyramid and this is the one that completes that Orion I was talking about. I don't know about you, Amy, but I think I'm turning into quite a strange blow because I feel more at peace now here than I've felt the entire time of this complex. I'm Just a strange bloke too. <laughs> With this like view ahead of us, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's so much more Jordan, isn't it? It's quite comfortable for us now, isn't it? Uh, the desert view. Yeah, I was, I was petrified, well not petrified, I was scared at first. But now it's just our um, natural habitat. Yeah, exactly. Away from those crowds. It's good because the site's so big. So everyone spreads out. I just can't believe that there's no um, like cover that they put up. For like, um, what do you call those like sails they put up? Like an awning? Yeah, like an awning. They do them in Australia. They put like long awnings over car parks um, in rows. Mm. I don't know why they don't have an awning just like around the pyramid. Like. You go into the pyramid, you sweat buckets as you've seen. It's claustrophobic. There might even be like not much air, it's stuffy. Mm. Then you step outside, you're under the 33, 35 degree sun with zero cover and you've sweated off your That's sun cream, yeah. It's actually cooler outside than inside the pyramid. Yeah. But it's because the sun's beaming down on us so we're a bit scared that we're gonna get really burnt. Now. Yeah, so we're getting some B-roll. I'm going to do more voiceover. After saying that on camera, we realised it actually made a lot of sense to get out of the sun before we get burnt. Or, you know, I shit my pants. Thanks, food poisoning. <laughs> We've covered a lot of history during this Egypt series, so I want to keep this video a bit lighter too. Just to add though, this pyramid of Menkori has some significant architectural features. Its smaller scale demonstrates a shift in royal priorities, and the outer casing was made out of granite, and that's much more challenging to work with. So this is all the casing for this smaller pyramid and it looks like almost a kind of red granite. Mm. Uh, you can see here. Yeah, it's almost like a red granite. Very interesting. Not the white limestone um, of the Great Pyramid. A lot of camels around. I have to say, the sand dunes around the outside of them really do give uh, the pyramids a bit of an atmosphere and, and set the scene around them of what, you know, Cairo would have looked like, or the surrounding areas of Cairo would have looked like. I say Cairo, Memphis, Memphis apologies, would have looked like, um, you know, back in the day. The only good thing I'll say about the camels is 
does create a slight atmosphere. You can kind of imagine them walking around here thousands of years ago, but I still don't condone any kind of animals in these kind of conditions being used for our entertainment. Do you agree? Yeah. It's scorched. I can't begin to tell you how hot it is. Like, look at my hair. It's soaked. It's absolutely roasting. Yeah, it's just reflecting off the ground as well. Yeah, we're gonna get so bad, badly burned. I'm not sure that sun cream is even on us anymore. We're just like downed a whole bottle of water, a little coke. Um, it's just so hot. Amy started to feel a bit dizzy towards the end of that, didn't you? She started to get symptoms of dehydration. My God, walking around there a few times, like my stomach just like really turned. So we're just back at the hotel now, guys. Unfortunately, we just went there at the wrong time of day. And uh, we also went there on a particularly hot day. Uh, the Egyptian guy we were speaking to afterwards was saying it's 35 degrees, which is actually quite hot even for them. The heat for us was just compounded by the fact that we were just like so ill again. So hopefully I've made something slightly watchable <laughs> in the edit with the footage that I captured. Um, but yeah, it was adventurous and it was fun to um, go into the temple, maybe a little bit um, intimidating for Amy, but really good fun. Definitely think twice about whether or not you want to be trapped in such a small space with so many people. But thank you very much for watching, guys. And tomorrow um, we're going to go look at Saqqara pyramids. Hopefully, we'll be feeling a bit better. Wow. <laughs> thank you.